Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a set of cards featuring the Lawn Fawn Easter Party stamp set as well as the Lawn Fawn Perfectly Plaid paper and a die from your next stamp to frame up my little kiddos here. They, I like this, I liked this set because it's kind of like coloring critters because they're all dressed up yet it features the kids and since I donate so many of my cards I like to think about you know different ways that I can create interesting cards for the kiddos and I thought um, it would be good to make sure that as I'm coloring children on cards like if I'm going to color people that I could try to color some different ethnicities so today I am going for a a set of warm browns to color the skin. I am using E11, 13, and 19. The skin isn't showing through in very many areas, but I'm still going to color them all the same. And when the skin is showing through the head of the costume, I'm just going to concentrate on making it the face look rounded and just kind of making the kids have a highlight down the center where the detail of the face is. So I'm using the 15 on the very, very edges and then blending out to the lighter color of the E11. For the bunny, I opted for the warm grays. I think whatever grays you have would look fine for the bunny and you could also color a brown bunny. I just, when I think of Easter, I think a little bit more traditionally of a white bunny. And, but if you want something to look white, you don't want to just leave it white. You want to add some shading. So I have a W3 as my very darkest in this case, blending it out with a W1 and then to a W00. But I do, like I said, I do think any of the colors, any of the gray colors could work if you have the T's or the N's or whatever. But I also think that pretty pastel colors would be great for the bunny. I've seen people color it pink and um, purple. You could do a blue or a green as well. I was just trying to go for that traditional white. And I'm also imagining my bunnies to be boys and I'm pairing them with some more of the blues and greens and yellows from the paper pad rather than the pinks and blues. I do think that it's easier to make cards that are more traditionally girly. Um, not that like boys don't like pink, but that there's so many paper pads and supplies that are just more girly because women buy more of the stuff. So, you know, it appeals to them. And but like I said, you know, when I donate cards, I like to kind of consider who they're going to and trying to make sure I have a mix and everybody's represented pretty well. And so those are just things that I was keeping in mind. I'm using G14 and YG13 to color the girl's dress. My thought here was that her dress is kind of like her stem essentially. And then there's like, it looks like she's kind of wearing a bonnet with the flower. So I wanted that to be yellow as if the inside the flower because I colored her the same colors I colored those teeny tiny little flowers that I'm going to put in their hands and I'm using R00 and R20 for the pinks. I tend to go with two or three colors unless I'm coloring a really large area. I don't usually go past three. I find that to be enough. But if you prefer much deeper shadows, you could go all the way to a fourth color. The E19 works pretty well in terms of those that skin tone series that I've been using today. The little girl has the most skin showing because her little arms and her feet poke out from underneath her dress, where the other critters are almost completely covered by their costumes. Although, looking at it, I chose that it would be the bare legs poking out from the duck costume, but I think that you could just make those yellow to match the duck as if he were wearing tights and maybe that would actually make a little bit more sense, but it's whatever you like. I also was thinking about this set and I was talking about it with my mom and sister and we were saying, you know, as much as this is a very, very cute Easter set, you only make so many Easter cards each year. And one reason we thought that this set would might be a little bit more flexible is because you could totally use these critters for Halloween as if they, you know, they were dressing up as these for a Halloween parade or something like that. And it would combine well with 
the there's another little kid set for Halloween so you could add them in and kind of do some more traditional Halloween uh, like kiddos with these Easter kiddos and then they would probably look a little bit less out of place like you're putting an Easter animal on a Halloween card but that was just one idea we had for using them I think the flower girl could be used all year round too because you know I mean whatever color you want to color it um it work out well spring cards but just I mean they're just it's just flowers and they're for every time I also think baby cards would be a great use for this one but I'm going to sorry I lost my train of thought there for a second this is part of a collaboration with some other fellow youtubers I'm working on a monthly lawn fawn collaboration with them and the theme this month was spring so I thought it was a great opportunity to use this new stamp set that I had recently purchased and make some like a, like a pile of spring cards I will say I did this even though this video is coming out at the end of March I did this actually at the very end of February I was just kind of working ahead knowing that that um, collaboration video was coming up I did not not buy the coordinating dies I do not buy coordinating dies very often anymore because I have my scan and cut and that's what I use to cut all of these out I used my cat scrappiness dies to cut the center out of my card panels and the reason I did this is because I wanted it to look like there were two layers but I didn't want to waste a bunch of my brand new lawn fawn paper I have a problem with hoarding lawn fawn paper in general, I always think, oh, I love it so much and I'm going to use the whole thing and I'm going to use it too fast if I don't conserve. But in general, I do think this is a great way if you want to get that look of multiple patterns, but you don't want to use as much paper, die cutting a shape out of the center and then switching between two cards, I think is a great way to use it. If you're only making one card and you still want the same thing, I would still encourage you to try the same trick cut it out and just save those pieces to the side because likely you'll use that frame and that die cut middle piece regardless of whether you use them together they'll still be, it'd be I think it would still be better to have that than to just simply layer them on top of each other and lose out all and all that paper in the center but of course that's a personal choice and I do think that rectangle dies make it much easier I also got this your next stamp stick rectangle frame and I liked that it framed up small images like this and added a little bit of detail to the card but it was still very easy to mass produce when I originally used it I used it with Elizabeth crafts like double-sided tape but I found that that did not die cut as well and I preferred using it with the stick it adhesive from Ken Oliver. So that's what I'm going to recommend. Um, I'll link both in the video description because maybe one suits your needs better. But I did find that the stick it frame worked a little bit better. And then I stamped the Happy Easter in the bottom and I popped up my little critter kiddos on some foam tape and I added something to each of their hands just because with the scan and cut it's so easy to cut out those little details why not and they're so fast to color up so that's it for my cards and video today if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're interested in more tutorials please subscribe to my channel as mentioned this is part of a collaboration so I will leave you links in the video description below to the other people who are creating with Lawn Fawn all creating spring cards for you to check out and I will also leave links to the products that I use in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you taking all the time to watch and comment and subscribe. Have an awesome day. Bye.